welcome back to my channel. Today's video is completely unplanned, but last week I asked you over my Instagram channel, Birth Baby Beyond, if you aren't following me already, whether or not most of you were familiar with the concept of having a family-centered or gentle cesarean birth. And so many of you were unfamiliar with this concept. So today we're going to be covering everything that you could possibly ask for when it comes to having a birth preference or birth plan regarding meeting your baby. Some of the things you might have heard of already, it might be common knowledge or perhaps common practice in your hospital already, and some of them might be a little bit more new to you. So get your notebook out and if you haven't already, make sure and go check me out on Instagram where I talked all about this in the first place, as well as my more day-to-day -day life. I also have a template that you can edit as a PDF option on my website for creating your own birth plan or birth preferences. So if this is the first video that you are joining me for, thank you so much for coming to see me here. My name is Kitty, I'm a registered nurse, I'm also a lactation consultant, hypnobirthing instructor, antenatal educator, and I'm a birth and postpartum doula. I'm also mum to two sweet little boys and bonus mama to Jess. I talk about everything from trying to conceive, birth, breastfeeding, postpartum, and everything in between. So if you're interested in that sort of content, make sure and hit that little subscribe button, and I will see you in the rest of this video and hopefully in my next one. So before we dive deep into what it is to do a little bit of birth planning around meeting your baby, let's talk about the importance of cesarean birth. Cesarean birth is birth. It is just as important. I would even go as far as to say that it's more important since the recovery time and exactly what goes on is so much more significant than physiological birth. We want to make sure we are minding those mamas who have a cesarean birth. It is far from the easy way out. So when it comes to meeting your baby by cesarean birth, whether it is something that is out of your control, your baby is in a position that simply can't be birthed vaginally, or in fact, it's an emergency scenario, these plans and having these birth preferences in place and having discussed them at around the 34 week mark with your care provider first means they can also act as a fantastic communication tool. So whether or not that kind of continuity of care is there, whether you may meet a new face when it comes to the actual day of meeting your baby or not, they can simply refer back to what it is that you would like when it comes to your baby's birth. So let's start at the very beginning. Creating a birth pre birth plan or birth preferences, as some people call them, is yes, a communication tool, but it also encourages you to seek out more information around your op options and what the different possibilities are in terms of meeting your baby. It's not a one plan fits all op uh, uh, scenario at all. So I would urge you to go and do a little bit of research on the different topics that I talk about here and use this time and this as a prompt for you to dive deep into learning a little bit more about your what your options are and helping you create the perfect plan for your baby. So I can't talk about cesarean birth without mentioning the importance of brain training and preparing your mind and your mindset for birth. Hypnobirthing does that and so much more. It's actually about creating tools that you can use, whether it's for an interview or a stressful day in work down the line. It's about drain, brain training for the rest of your life, really. So if you're interested in training your mind to meet your baby, make sure that you check out my website links down below and have a little look or send me an email and see whether this is the sort of course that might suit you. So hypnobirthing is about so much more than just your breath. It's about using the tools of visualization, using the tools of meditation and hypnosis to be able to get you into that little safe bubble so that you can always come back to that, that safe space no matter what way or route your birth takes. When it comes to breathing your baby out, you breathe your baby out whether they are born vaginally or whether they are born via cesarean section. So practicing hypnobirthing can help you use those tools as well. You also might want to think a little bit about the ambiance for your birth. So perhaps you would like to have um, sort of dimmed lights. Really and truly the only lights that need to be on for cesarean birth are the lights that shine down directly on where the cesarean birth is taking place. So that of course your obstetrician can have a nice clear vision of what they are doing and it's all very safe. But you can have the the rest of the lights in the room nice and dimmed. If you want to, you can have your aromatherapy oils diffusing. You can have hushed voices so that there's sort of 
minimized chatter and when it comes to your baby's birth and their actual arrival into the world that the first voice that they hear is their parents so not only are you able to be the person that announces the sex of your baby but it's the first voice that they hear which is really really lovely Another thing that you might want to consider doing is when it comes to the preparation around your birth and around having maybe your spinal inserted, that you can make sure that you have your IV lines on your non-dominant arm. That means that when it comes to doing skin to skin and cuddles with your baby, that it's a little bit easier access for you. When it comes to access, you can also ask for your gown, so your the gown, surgical gown that you'll be wearing, to be worn back to front. This means that there's plenty of space in the front for your baby to be popped up on your chest nice and comfortably. On the note of having plenty of access for your baby to be placed up on your chest, you can ask for another thing. So you can ask for your ECG dots, that's the, the heart tracing monitors, to be placed on your back so they're nice and out of the way. There is nothing to say that if your baby isn't born nice and pink, with great tone and cries well themselves, that they don't have to be whisked, that, that they have to be whisked away for immediate checks postpartum. They can be brought directly to you after a nice little bit of delay cord clamping which is another thing that you might want to look up after this. I'll leave some really um, helpful links down below without diving too deep into each of these topics in themselves but in brief delayed cord clamping is where all of that lovely oxygenated nutrient rich rich blood flow goes from the placenta to your baby. This is according to research has allowed baby to have nice full iron stores when it comes to you know relying on breast milk or formula right up into that six month mark and more before they start solids um so it also helps them with their kind of transition from extra uterine life so a great start for them and there's nothing to say that just because your baby is born vaginally that they can't also have the delayed cord clamping so after delayed cord clamping <laughs> if your baby comes out nice and pink and is doing really really well and is nice and vigorous and their apgar scores are good that that doesn't mean that you can't delay the neonatal check that they would have generally have done immediately um, previously when it comes to cesarean birth. So if your baby is doing well, you can ask for those checks, like the checks of, you know, listening to their heart, checking that they got, you know, five fingers on each hand, etc, uh, etc, et that all of those things can be done after time skin to skin. So when it comes to time skin to skin, it does a whole lot of wonderful things. Skin to skin isn't just about the cuddles, it's about regulating your baby's blood sugar, their heart rate, their temperature. Time spent skin to skin also releases lovely hormones in mum and in baby to help get breastfeeding off to the best start. It does all sorts of wonderful things as well as diversifying baby's microbiome. So for a baby um, who is sort of having a hard time transitioning to extra uterine life, the best thing that you can do is come back to the basics of skin to skin. So requesting time skin to skin immediately after delivery means that you can actually be being stitched up while your baby is snuggled up on your chest. And just to clarify, skin to skin time does not just mean cheek to cheek with your baby bundled up like a little burrito. True skin to skin is where your baby is either completely naked or just in their nappy and they are placed up directly on your chest with nothing in between you and maybe a little warm blanket over the top of you because sometimes those theatres can be a little bit. So this one might be a little bit more out there, but we touched quite briefly in that last clip on diversifying your baby's microbiome through skin to skin. You can do it through skin to skin, but you can also do it through breastfeeding. Since your baby isn't coming through the vaginal canal, if they are born by a cesarean section, some women will choose to do something called vaginal seeding, which is where you would place a sterile gauze swab up inside the vaginal ca cavity for up to two hours, sometimes four hours before your baby's arrival. And then you would uh, remove the same gauze and wipe it over your baby's eyes and face and hands um, to help really diversify their microbiome. The research now says that it's less um, less beneficial than we used, to, we used to see. Make sure and check out the free microbiome courses that I will have linked down below for a little bit more information. But always evidence is just coming out to show us more and more around this. So that might be something that you might be worthwhile considering. It's a little bit more tricky to do if you are in an emergency birth scenario, um, but like that, if you are preparing for an elective cesarean, you might want to look into this a little bit more deeply. So this video might be a little bit all over the place, but now we're going to dive back to your act, the actual emergence of your baby. So there is no need, if this is not an emergency scenario, for your baby to be 
pulled out in one big go. You could have your baby be born slowly and gently in a way that would be as close to a vaginal birth as possible. The reason that this can be really nice is not only is it a lovely slow gentle transition to extra uterine life or life outside the womb but it also means the baby might get that nice little squeeze that they would ordinarily get as they come out of your body in a vaginal delivery so that means that these babies are less likely to be mucousy which is quite common for a cesarean baby so having your baby birthed nice and slowly is a really nice way to avoid some of that happening i will share some of my favorite gentle family centered cesarean births down below when your baby is born, whether it be slowly or quickly, if it's an emergency scenario, you can also ask for either a clear drape so you can see your baby being born. You might also want to ask the obstetrician who's doing the surgery to talk you through the process to let you know at what stage of surgery they are at. If you would like to be able to visualise at what phase you're in to help you stay calm. Some people love that, some people don't. And only you will be able to know what is right for you and your family when it comes to meeting your baby and moving away from a place of fear more towards a place of confidence. So thinking about whether you want a clear drape, whether you want to be chatted to and be have clear communication about the phases of the surgery, you might equally just want the drape to be lowered as your baby emerges so you get that lovely Lion King moment. If indeed you are asking for voices to be a little bit more hushed around this phase of birth, not only is baby going to hear mummy and daddy's voice or mummy and mummy or daddy and daddy's voice just as birth um, takes place, but it also means that you get that sweet little moment where either one of you will be able to announce the sex of your baby if that's something that you have kept a surprise. So now your baby is here and no matter what way birth has been, birth has gone for you, spending time, having that kind of time to bond, to room in with your baby to, for them to get to know you and you to get to know them and help you get feeding off to the best start is the next step. Make sure and chat to your care provider about how you want to feed your baby. If you're going to breastfeed your baby, maybe it might might be a good idea to touch base with a lactation consultant before your baby arrives to give you a heads up on some of the things that might help get breastfeeding off to a good start post cesarean birth because sometimes there can be a few little bumps in the road when it comes to having that sort of start to life. Make sure and check out my Instagram and my website down below for your free breastfeeding prep template um, or a breastfeeding plan you might want to call it and <clears throat> I hope you found this video a little bit more informative and that you are looking forward to meeting your baby after this. Meeting your baby should be one of the most exciting days of your life and I hope that my content can help you get there. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in my next video.